Okay. For those who have asked for an earlier show, you got it. You got an earlier show. It is 4.34 p.m. The official start time is still scheduled for 5 p.m., but we figured we'd start a little early for those who want an earlier show. <clears throat> and it is a beautiful day here in Thurmont, Maryland. We've got a blue sky day with white fluffy clouds. I got a nice walk in today. It was a little bit brisk. It's about 45 degrees when I went for my walk. <clears throat> so I had to walk over and measure the garage door height uh, for my, uh, just in case I get a unit. I want to make sure it would fit in the garage. And so the unit I was looking at is this same model, 2009 Braun Spartan Super Chief. And this one sold, but the gentleman has two others. And it turns out, well, let me show you. It turns out that the, um, the, the one I was considering has a lot of hours. It has 135,000 miles, but it has a lot of hours on it, like 9,000 hours. So I think I'm going to hold off on that. But I kind of like the Super Chief. What do you guys think? This is on the Spartan chassis. The Spartan chassis. And it is a heavy-duty beast. It is a heavy-duty beast. You know, we like heavy-duty. <clears throat> we like durability, right? <clears throat> we like things that last. This is overbuilt. This is 25,000-pound GVW. So you could load whatever you want to load into this puppy. Load it up is what you could do. So there you go. <clears throat> A Braun Spartan Super Chief. Super Chief, 14-foot box. There you go. All right, so what do you guys think about that? Let me see if I can find you on the chat here. I can find the, the show. Let's see if I go to videos. How do I find this? Here we go. I guess I'm live right here. Spartan Super Chief. Okay, so the lovely Lady Bree is in the house. And uh, Blue says, wow, early, okay. And uh, Brie Fit Dance is saying hi to all of everyone. And good evening, Craig, and everybody from Stig. We like quality on this channel. Yeah, we, we, we don't buy a lot of junk, uh, just so you guys know. We don't buy a lot of junk around here. And we like stuff that lasts. We like heavy-duty stuff. By the way, I'm wearing one of my oldie but goodies. This is cashmere. Super comfortable, super comfortable. One of my favorite sport coats. People say, oh, it's too loud, you know, that pattern and all that. Some people have no taste. They have no taste. Stig's in the house. So here's the little stream deck I've been playing with. Here's the stream deck. Now, see the logos in the upper right? If I click this button, this says LT logo. You can't read it. But if I click this button, see the little treasury logo goes in the right corner? The next one is the Mid-Atlantic TV logo, just that. And then the first one, of course, had Mid-Atlantic TV and Brief at Dance. Then if I push this next button, it says SBGY002 cuff on it. So that's the 002 stunner, the cuff shot, right? Then if I push the next shot, it says 002 faux pay. So that's the 002 with the faux pay. And of course, Brianna's gold stunner too. And here's the 002 in sunlight. Each of these buttons is labeled. And so here's another SBGY002. Here's the SBGA231, the diver stunner. And here's Brief Fit Dance, BriefFitDance.com. Here's the SBGN005. There's a button for that. Each of these buttons has this the name on it, right? This one says Money Clip. Push that. It's got a picture of the Money Clip with the Day Date. And this is 18238. That's another Day Date shot. So how do you guys like that? What do you guys think about that? I just push a button and I can bring up a photo. Just like that. Don't have to use the computer and Flickr to show it. Using the built-in media player on the um, ATEM software in conjunction with this Stream Deck. This Stream Deck. I told Steve he should get one. They make one with even more buttons on it. It was sold out. So I got this one. It has 15 buttons. I think the other one has 32, something like that. The bigger one. I'm on the wait list for that. Can't wait to get that. So let me know, uh, Lady Brianna, are you still watching? Let me know what you think about the um, the stream deck. The stream deck. Let me know what you think about that. And Oh, she already says pretty cool right there. 
<clears throat> good stuff. Now, are we talking about the Stream Deck or the um, the the Braun uh, Super Chief? The Braun Super Chief. Wh which are we talking about here? <laughs> or are we talking about the 002 Gold Stunner that's on my wrist? We could be talking about a lot of things when you just say good stuff. That's pretty generic. Uh, Craig, this is a great improvement, says Stig. Oh, you like the buttons? Like when I say money clip, I can just push the button like that, and I can show you the money clip. And the SBG in 005, I can just push it like that and just show you that. You like that? And I want to show you Brief Fit Dance. I can just click that button. You kind of like that? Go back to the normal shot. Texas just went 100% open and no masks. Well, you know, I've heard... Uh, I've got some disturbing news about Texas. They were talking about it on one of my podcasts that I listened to. And they said that um, a lot of the policies from California are being exported to Texas. That a lot of the people moving into Texas are bringing the California policies with them. And that Texas is starting to get a homeless problem and other issues similar to California <laughs> So maybe the place to go is absolutely Florida. I, I hate to say this, but I, I think maybe our last stronghold is going to be Florida. Florida, folks. Blues in the house. Stream Deck and Super Chief 002 and Bree. <laughs> Good point, Blue. Good point. Stream Deck looks great. It is what Steve needs to completely mess him <laughs> Well, actually, I think once he gets it programmed, I think it'll be easier because the, each button will say on it, he can put the model number of each watch on the button. And so if somebody asks about a particular model, he can push that button and bring it up. So, yeah, but he's only limited to a certain number of buttons, so he'd have to have the shows focused on certain models, right? And, and you know, have, let's say, 20 photos of different Breitlings or whatever show he's doing, right? And Blue says, I'm going to Sarasota. Excellent, excellent move, excellent move. You need something like a 231 Stunner for a high durability watch if you're going to Sarasota because you might be like going in the salt water and that titanium is extremely, extremely corrosion resistant, more so than the 904L stainless steel that Rolex uses. The titanium is more... Uh, resistant to corrosion. <clears throat> so you might need a 231 if you're going in the salt water. Kyle's in the house. That is amazing news, though, about Texas. But I do want to check out Florida again for sure. Yep. Yeah, because Kyle, you'd hate to go to Texas and establish roots there and then find out a few years later that they've, you know, that. California has exported all of their policies to um, to Texas. You don't want you don't want that. I wish South Dakota was really tropical and nice. Good point. Oh, did you see uh, what's her name? Nome, the the governor. Did you see her speech? Oh my gosh, she is awesome. Not just because she's gorgeous, right? She's she's fifty years old, forty nine, I think, and she's gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and so her speech was amazing the other day uh christy gnome is that her name anyway whatever it is google it she's the governor of of south dakota and she is off the chart smart beautiful super cool did i say she's smart so there you go uh blue in the house craig i'll meet you in sarasota all right Absolutely, we can do that. We'll do lunch. Call me. Call me. We'll do lunch. <laughs> but that's a California thing. I shouldn't be doing that. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think about the uh, the brawn? What do you think about the brawn? Super Chief. Super Chief. What do you guys think? What are you thinking about the about the Super Chief? The Super Chief Braun. What are you thinking about that? Is that pretty awesome? Ooh, the seats fold up in the back. That's pretty cool. That's a heavy-duty beast there. 
That's a beast, okay? That is a beast of a beast of a super beast. A super chief, a super chief, super beast. This thing is, um, this thing has got a 25,000 pound GVW <laughs> just to carry that little ambulance box on the back. Talk about overbuilt. Talk about built without regard to cost. Oh, to tilt the cab. You've got a hydraulic thing to tilt the cab. How wild is that? You tilt it up and you get access to everything. There's the air conditioning vents all up the, the middle there because air conditioning falls, right? So there you go. The, the Braun Super Chief. Braun. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. Um, yes, that is her name. Yes, she is very pretty and seems smart. Carlos in the house. And articulate. I mean, she's on top of her game. Kyle's in the house. I saw it, and I wish that we could trade Newsom for her in California. Oh, would that be a heck of a trade? Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine a trade? We don't like to talk politics on this channel, but, you know, she's pretty much all that. Um, and Kyle says she, she must have been drop-dead gorgeous 20, 30 years ago. I tell you, she's still drop-dead gorgeous. <laughs> Whoa. She's holding up really well. Blue's in the house. I can have an all-out office in the Super Chief Beast. Yeah, it's, that's what it is. It's a mobile office command center. Mobile office command center. Jeepu's in the house. Are you allowed to drive that even if you're not an EMT? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you can tag title it, get insurance, and you can drive it now. There is some question if you're if you got it for commercial use and insured for commercial use, you might need a CDL driver's license because it does have air brakes and everything. But if you title it as an RV, if you convert it to an RV, if you meet the requirements of an RV in your state and they approve it as an RV, then you don't need a CDL because a lot of RVs, big, heavy, like pushers and stuff, have air brakes and all, and no CDL is required. But if you do this for commercial use, like an office, like commercial use, then, yeah, you probably would need a CDL endorsement on your driver's license if you got stopped and the cop was smart enough to know that, right? So there you go. There you go. That's how that works. Um, let's see. Blue said, okay, I already read that. Um, are you buying that Craig? Okay. So here's the thing. I was talking to the guy. He had three of them, three of them. And I asked him about the nicest one he has, and he sent me pictures and everything. And it's pretty impressive. I was on the fence. He was asking 39,000 <clears> and it's got 130,000 miles on it, but it has nine thousand hours on it and that's just a little bit much on the hours uh it's a little bit little bit much and so i'm going to keep looking for one that has lower miles and lower hours i'd like to get something with less than hundred thousand miles and like less than four thousand hours four thousand hours like tops uh, if it's well maintained and all that, then it's going to still have a lot of life left in it. With 9,000 hours, that thing might need an overhaul, you know, at like 10 or 12,000 hours. So it's getting too close to like overhaul time. Now, idling hours are not as hard on an engine as just actual stressed driving down the road. But still, it has 130,000 miles on it and 9,000 hours. So, it, it, yeah, it's a little bit too much. So I told him as much, and I said, listen, keep an eye out for a cream puff with lower mileage, lower hours. And I don't necessarily need the Spartan chassis. I can go back to the um, International 4300 Series chassis uh, with a Braun, a Super Chief box on it. That would be adequate as well. Uh, so I'm going to keep looking. How would you convert it to an RV? Um, Jeepu, you, you really, for me, what I would do is I would do minimal conversion. I would add a... Hydronic heating system to it, a diesel-fired, 
uh, to heat hot water and to heat the back when the engine's not running. When the engine's running, you've got front and rear air conditioning already. It's already built into it. We call that over-the-road air conditioning and heat. So when you're running down the road, you're fine, right? But when you're parked for like a couple days somewhere and you want heat, you need a diesel-fired hydronic heating system. That's the best way to go. So I would install that. That would be a couple grand to do that. <clears throat> And then, of course, you have to install a water tank in one of those outside compartments. I'd install like an 80-gallon water tank. I like to have plenty of water on board. And then you'd have to install your plumbing. have to install a sink. I'd install a shower. Uh, I already have it figured out how I could put a shower in one of the rear compartments. And that would work out pretty good. And then uh, I would add a secondary air conditioning system also for when the thing is parked and you're not running the engine. I would add a separate 12 volt air conditioning system. I'd add about 1200 watts of solar to the roof and of course a solar con controller and so forth. Some lithium batteries, lithium batteries like a thousand a piece. So if you, let's say you put four of them in there, that's four grand right there. So you're talking about 20 to $30,000 in equipment to do the conversion. That's assuming you do it all the work yourself, which most of this stuff I can do myself. Uh, I'd have some uh, aluminum angle iron welded on the roof to mount the um, solar panels to because I wouldn't want to drill holes in the roof. So I'd have a, a, my buddy's a welder. I'd have him do that. Um, so, yeah, so you're going to spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 minimum on just the, just the equipment. And, and see, the nice thing about starting with something like this is all the cabinets are already in there. All the AC power plugs are already in there. All the 12 volt power plugs are already in there. You wouldn't have to add much of that. All the lighting is in there. Again, front and rear air conditioning for when you're driving down the road. So a lot of the things you need are already there. That's the advantage of starting with something like this. So you don't need to do a ton. I would put a Murphy bed that folds up against the wall where the bench is, where the crew bench is. I would install a Murphy bed there that folds up against the wall and then the back side of that which would be the underside of the bed when it's folded down that would have my computer workstation mounted to it so when it's in the up position I'd have my full standing desk with my keyboard and everything and my monitors and all that and then when it's in the down position for sleeping that would all in effect be under the bed right so you're, you're using you're you're really utilizing your space as efficiently as possible that's the idea that's the idea. So let's see here. Um, are you gonna are are you going to get a Prevost as well, or just stick with this? I don't know, Kyle. Um, that's a very good question. This is something that could possibly be pulled, with probably not the Spartan chassis one. But if I got one on the International Forty Three Hundred chassis, the medium duty truck, they're about fifteen thousand pounds. I could probably tow that behind a Prevo. So that would be pretty awesome. So I could end up with both at some point. That's correct. Uh, let's see here. Kevin's in the house. Um, Mississippi governor just followed suit with Texas. 100% open, no mask starting tomorrow. Super cool. The Spartan chassis is better. But, well, the International 4300 chassis is a medium-duty truck chassis, which by all accounts is extremely robust, has an inline six-cylinder diesel engine, uh, is extremely robust. So I wouldn't say better. I would say different. An advantage to this is you've got that big cab with the rear seat and everything, a lot of extra storage area there, right? So you got some extra room there. And... The disadvantage is you don't have the pass-through where you can walk from the cab back into the box because that whole cab tilts up hydraulically to get to the engine and all that. It's a cab over, right? So you don't have that. You have to get outside of the cab and walk around and get in the back of the box, which is a disadvantage. So they both have their advantages and disadvantages. That's how I would say that is. In other words, this would be your only mobile rig, um, well, initially this would be like a mobile office slash like for overnight trips for two or three day trips. It wouldn't be something that I would want to stay in for like months. You could do that with a Prevo, right? 
but I probably wouldn't want to do that with something like this. This is more like a mobile office situation. And, you know, you could certainly overnight in it and all that. I wonder how many meters uh, the beast will go on one liter of fuel. Okay. These get about, usually these get about 10 miles to the gallon. But you don't buy any of these things to get uh, for good fuel mileage. So, yeah. Uh, this is amazing. Kevin, uh, could you convert an inmate transport vehicle to an RV? Well, you can convert almost anything to an RV. A lot of people convert um, school buses to RVs and all. I mean, some of them are kind of junky. Uh, I, the thing that's attractive about an ambulance is they're so well made. And like I say, so much of the work has already been done. They've got great cabinets inside. They've got all the electric all run with the lights and plugs and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's a lot that's already done there, folks, to, to use it for a mobile office. And they're built without regard to cost. And the quality is stellar. Stellar. A lot of homemade RVs that people convert, are, uh, the quality is not always stellar. Jeep is in the house. I think not being able to get to the back is a deal breaker for an RV. Yeah, it's it's a negative. It's definitely a negative. It's definitely a negative. Now, there is a way you can do that. I believe you could do it. Um, what you would have to do is cut a door in the rear of the cab, right? Cut a door in the rear of the cab, and then cut a door in the front of the box. So you'd have to have two doors in order to have it all weather sealed, right? Because there's a gap, there's a small gap between the cab and the box, right? So what you would do is you would put two doors in, and so it wouldn't be a big deal. You open one door and you'd have a small gap. You just step over the gap and step into the, you know, open the other door, step into the other. Sort of like on a train. You know how trains are where the two cars are hooked together and they're kind of wiggling like that and all that. And, they, and you open a door and you step and then you step in the other door. I mean, it would be kind of like that, but not, not as big a gap. So I think you could do it. I think you could rig up a door in each and, and be able to go from one into the other. I think I don't think that would be a hard thing for a fabricator guy. Somebody pretty good uh, could fabricate that for you. Find a good old boy that's good with a cutting torch, right? Uh, let's see here. Um, so ambulance is your number one choice for RV conversions. Any runner-ups? Well, see, the other the, here's the other issue. Here's the other reason why I'm looking at the ambulance is. I have a garage space, existing garage space, that, but it only has a 10-foot clearance door. And so these ambulances, pretty much all of them, will fit. Even this one, that's about 9.5 feet tall, total height, right? So even that rig there would fit in my garage. Whereas a typical RV, uh, most typical RVs are taller than that and will not fit. So that's another advantage to, for me for buying the ambulance is it'll fit in my existing garage. And that's a factor. And, and like I say, it's just mainly the quality. I mean, these things are designed. You should watch the videos on YouTube. They have rollover tests where they roll them and they have tests where they have a truck run broadside into the side of these things. These things are built like tanks, folks. I'm not exaggerating. These things, it's insane how well they're built. So are there other choices? Not really. Not that check all those boxes. There aren't. I mean, built without regard to cost. <laughs> Most of the work already done. Relatively reasonable in price. Extremely robust. Uh, if you get a good one and you maintain it, will last indefinitely. Uh, they got a lot of pros. A lot of pros, not a lot of cons. Most RVs are not very well made. They're, they're made to be used on the weekends and, you know, for a few years, and then you lose interest or whatever, and they fall apart, and then you trade them in for another one. I mean, they're just not, 
they're not robust commercial grade units. That's my, my take on the RVs, on the typical RVs, right? All right, so what else? Um, let's go through the buttons one more time. Here's the stream deck. Here's the stream deck. If I click on this button here, you'll see the little treasury logo in the upper right hand corner. See that? If I click on this one, you'll see the Mid-Atlantic TV logo in the upper right hand corner. You, if I click on this one, it's going to switch to a photo of the 002 under the cuff. See there? If I switch to this one, it's going to show the faux pay with the Grand Seikos. Here's the Grand Seiko in the sun. Here's the another one of the Grand Seiko 002. Here's the 231. Here's the lovely Brianna. Here's the 005. Here's the money clip. Here's the 231. And let me see if I can go to, and here's the red sub. Remember the red sub that I sold to Paul Falpel? Here's another one of it. Here's the faux pays. Another one of the 231. Another one of the 231. Here's another faux pay with Steve. There's Steve with the 002 on his wrist and the faux pay. And here is the wonderful Frederick Fence Company. Frederick Fence Company. So there you go. So that's a rundown. A rundown of the switcher. Uh, Cliff Dweller, are they expensive to insure? Um, I wouldn't say expensive. I would say they are not cheap to insure, but I got a quote on the international uh, for $1,000 a year, which isn't terrible, and that would be commercial insurance. Um, different states have different rates and so on and so forth. Some states are, are cheaper. Um, and I think if you insure it as an RV, it would be cheaper, right, than getting the commercial maybe, maybe. But, yeah, I mean, again, these things are not inexpensive beasts to fool with. So I think insurance is going to be the least of your worries. Um, yeah. Uh, you can integrate Stream Deck with keyboard maestro macros. Yeah, they can... The Stream Deck can be used for all kinds of cool things. Absolutely, Carlos. Lance is in the house. Hey, Carlos. And here, I mean, in asking the question about the insurance costs, this, this is an interesting point. And I've been noticing some people on the, in the crypto Twitter, and I also notice them in the watch forums sometimes and all. People are all excited that they're going to be getting another stimulus check, right? And... Hey, what watch are you going to buy with your stimulus check? You know, blah, blah, blah. What, and the other guy, you know, what altcoins are you going to buy? Are you going to buy Bitcoin with your stimulus check? And I'm thinking to myself, hey, guys, wait up a second here. If you qualify for getting a stimulus check, you probably shouldn't be buying a luxury watch. And maybe you shouldn't even be putting money in Bitcoin. Just saying. <laughs> maybe you should... Do something a little more conservative with that money if you qualify for a stimulus check, right? Uh, these luxury items are really not for people in those income groups. Uh, I think it's, it might be a poor choice to take your stimulus check and buy a luxury item. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think about that? <clears throat> Carl's in the house. Uh, fix it up to be your mobile office with a sleeping area. Just make sure you don't forget your Bitcoin wallet passwords. Well, I wouldn't keep my wallet passwords in the rig. <laughs> I wouldn't keep them in there, uh, even though it's pretty secure and you know pretty robust. I still wouldn't risk that. Carlos is in the house. Stig, we have curfew at night. This last weekend was the last one with full lockdown. Yeah, I, I, think, it, I think we're going to get to a point here pretty soon where, where people are just going to say, I've had enough, where people aren't going to put up with these, this, uh, ridiculous, these ridiculous government actions. Um, like Christy Nome said in her speech, she says, I don't think governors have the authority to tell people they need to shut down their business. And I agree with her. I, I think we have, you know, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, right? Part of that is running your business and building your business. 
And I don't think those kinds of things should be encroached on by the government. I don't think that's their bailiwick. Cliff dwellers in the house, yeah, like like paying off the credit card debt you have from the first sub you bought. Good point. Yeah, pay off the credit card debts. That would be a good use of the stimulus money. Yeah. All right, so let's see. It's 5.04. This is actually the official time when we would normally start, and Lance hasn't sent us any emails. Let me check. Let me see if he's actually sent us something and we didn't see it. Maybe we didn't see it. Da, 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 da. No, there's no um, there's no email from 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 uh, the Lanster. Okay. Um, it's fundamental fundamental American values, Jipu. Bree has six words of Craig's recover he and myself another six. There you go. But the problem is I have 24, <laughs> Carlos. <laughs> so we need six times six. We need six plus six plus six plus six. So there you go. Imagine if Americans agreed to quarter, agreed to quarter red coats. Not sure what that all means, but maybe I'll figure it out in time. Beauty service in the house. Hey, Craig, I'm mostly done with watches. Sent email of a new hobby. Okay. Okay, and Lance just sent an email. <laughs> all right, let's see what we can find here. Let's cut to the 231 while we figure this out. Um, here's BU serves new, new, new hobby. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking the new hobby. I don't blame you one bit. Depending on where you are, you those those puppies might come in handy. They might come in handy. All right, let's see what else we got here. Lance is sending a uh, gold a gold stunner here it looks like. Oh. Whoa. It looks like prices are going up on the 038. That's Brianna's model. That's $5,569. I wonder if the lovely Brie is still watching. She probably, she probably isn't watching. She's probably got something to do. But let, let's see here. It's the one I like, and it's, it looks like it's got the original strap. And it looks like it, it's the same dial that I like. That's the watch, and it looks like prices are going up. And this one is in Japan. See, I tell you, inflation is hitting us already, okay? Inflation big time is hitting us. You're starting to see it. The dollar, these things are not going up in price. The dollar is going down in value is what's happening. So, so yeah. So they didn't fill out much of the information, but it, we know what it is. It's 35 Point five mils. It is. Um, it's a nine F. It's it's a stunner. It's as simple as that. It's a stunner. It's a stunner, 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 stunner. Look at that profile. Look how neat, how good looking they are from the side. Patek Philippe could take some uh, pointers from that. And look at that crown. Look at the crown. How nice is that? Look at the case back. How nice is that? Nice signed crown. The only thing that would make it better would be if it had a deployant. There you go. Good find. Lance, the money. They want all the money, though. They do want the money. There's the money that they want. Fifty-five sixty-nine USD. <clears throat> okay. Uh, 666. <laughs> uh, serve. I'm more or less like that, but I enjoy the community. Okay. serve. you can get a lot of watches with your new hobby. <laughs> there you go. 
Uh, Stig is in the house. Here in Denmark, we sadly are going in the wrong direction. Now the police force are watching in the streets if people are not keeping distance. Wow. Life's too short to wait for the perfect financial situation to buy a luxury watch. I say buy it. Carl in the house. There you go. What the heck? That's the whole the all the whole life's too short thing is is typically the mantra of those with short term thinking. That's right. And a lot of times those with short term thinking end up broke, but there's that. So it is what it is. Kyle's in the house where well, I wish I could grab one of those with the GS up top but for less money. Yeah. Yeah, we all we all wish that would be the case. BU serves in the house. Uh, there is a new model, by the way. There is a model. Um, I guess it's SBGX238. SBGX238 that is the new model with the GS at the top. But they are scarce as hen's teeth. They are hard to come by. Uh, <clears throat> I was starting to think about bribing the Rolex AD with one of them. <laughs> LOL, Carlos. Yeah, there you go. Stig, move to Sarasota or Texas. Craig, are you going to Florida anytime soon? Um, maybe not. It's going to start getting hot there, but I, I might. It's possible I'll be going down, uh, but it's hard to say. <clears throat> Patek could take some pointers from GS. Some horologist heads are going to explode. There you go. Um, Stig's in the house. But hey, I just speak the truth on this channel. You know how it works. Stig's in the house. As soon as people saw the GS on Lady Brianna's wrist, the prices started to go up. It looks like that's the case. Kyle's in the house. Paul, Paul, Th Paul Thorpe did a video on how to get any hot model. You serve uh, re reminded of it. Okay. Okay. A Rolex hot model. There you go. I'll tell you, though, even the Pepsi, which is one of the coolest Rolexes that they make right now, even the list price of the Pepsi, I can think of a whole bunch of watches that I would rather buy for that same amount of money. So, yeah, I'm just so over it. I, I'm just... I think there are better watch options out there for the same or less amount of money. And so that's probably what I would buy. Yeah. And I'm not a fan of the super case, the slab sides that they have on all those watches. I, I like the more rounded. That's why I was I was commenting about this this case. I like the more rounded on the sides. See how that's nice and rounded? I mean, trust me when I say that makes it more comfortable on the wrist. I mean, there's a reason you have rounded sides on the case like that. When you bend your wrist up and down and all that, when the watch interacts with your wrist, it's more comfortable than having sharp edges and sides. I, I, I just don't understand why they don't understand that. Why doesn't Rolex understand that? Uh, hot model equals Brie. Yeah, yeah, duh. Yeah, she's pretty much all that. Um She's going to be releasing another video this weekend, so stay tuned for that. Um, what else is going on? Hmm. I'm trying to think. Oh, Bitcoin took a little pullback. Bitcoin pulled back today. It was back up over 50,000 briefly yesterday, and it pulled back. It's at uh, 47.7 47, right now, 47,700. It keeps struggling to to get over that 5,000 number and hold over that. I, there seems to be a lot of selling pressure, a lot of people selling up around $5,000 and a little bit before that, obviously. And, and so it's struggling. So, But my take on this is the longer it can stay in this range, anywhere between 40 and 50,000 and go sideways in that range, the better. The longer it stays in that range going sideways, the, the stronger it'll get. The more it'll consolidate and the more the weak hands are getting sh shaken out and the strong hands are, are taking control. And then things are going to start getting interesting. Once we get rid of the weak hands, things are going to start getting interesting, I think. I think that's how this is all going to work out. Uh, let's see. 
Um, <clears throat> if I had my choice, I'd take Batgirl over Pepsi. I don't think that's the popular choice. I'd take either one. For me, that would be a coin toss. I like them both. Carl's in the house. True, but you never get anywhere if you don't spend some money to look nice. Well, I yeah. I mean, when I was working, when I was selling cars and all, I made a point to look nice. But you spend a small portion of your income. You have to have high income to go along with that. So you always spend a small portion of your income on your attire and, and so on and so forth, like your watch. You know, I recommend don't spend more than one week's income on a watch, right? And so if you follow those guidelines, then you'll always be saving and investing. Then you'll be able to build wealth. That's correct. But you got to have that high income because that's what, that's what gets everything going is the high income. That's what allows you to buy nice clothes and still have money to save and invest. Um, Craig, you have to promote Rolex a bit for Colonial Jewelers. Too much uh, GS talk. Um, Colonial Jewelers used to be a sponsor on Frederick.com, keyword being used to be. They did not renew their sponsorship. And I think one of the reasons they didn't is because I've been promoting Grand Seiko so much. <laughs> it's ironic. I told them that I would, I would promote their Rolex watches, but they didn't want to come on the show. They didn't want to do a show. They didn't want to set up a system at their place to do shows. They didn't want to do anything. They said, well, we can't really do anything, blah, blah, blah. You know, they got a lot of restrictions on them. So, so they're gone, and I replaced where they had their ad on frederick.com. Guess who took their spot? Steve. Little treasury. I'll show you right now. <laughs> this is funny. This is funny. They're very backward anyway, Colonial Jewels. They're, they're not uh, internet savvy. Oh, shoot. Let me pull this up. I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up here. Okay. All right. So here we are on Frederick.com. If I go to shopping right here, okay, if I go to shopping, look what's number one. Little Treasury Jewelers. Little Treasury Jewelers. A destination jeweler I put there. They are a destination so what do you guys think about that? The Rolex AD asleep at the switch. Asleep. Let's see. Um, Uh-oh. Things are moving along here fast. I got to catch up here. Um, Craig, are you still thinking about releasing the GS Diver into the world? Just wondering. Well, $5,000 will release it. I wouldn't sell it for any less. 5000 to a subscriber. They'd get, they'd get the best 231 on the planet. Stig's in the house. Kyle, you are a man of power. You get any steel Rolex you want. A JMG scalped some at 44 k this weekend. So he scalped some Bitcoin at 44 k Carlos is in the house. We serve as a uh, fetishist. Okay. Um, okay. A JMG internet gossip is that Twitter will convert some of its cash. That would be wild. Yeah, there has been gossip on that. I agree. That would be wild. Kyle's in the house. We're waiting for the other shoe to drop. We're waiting for somebody, Google, Facebook, somebody, some big company to buy a bunch of Bitcoin. That would be the other shoe dropping. Kyle's in the house, LOL. I'm fortunate to have good relations with my AD, but they don't give me anything I, I want, unfortunately. There you go. I like the Batman and the Kermit. Uh, yeah, I would go for the Batgirl. I'd rather have the Jubilee bracelet. and It looks much better. Kyle's in the house. Actually, though, they called me yesterday and thanked me for making my YouTube video. A customer showed them my channel. They didn't know I made the video. Cool. Oh, that's cool. Kyle, Carl, uh, new or original Kermit, which would you choose? And Steve, always two steps ahead, Jeepu in the house. Yeah, he's no joke. Stig's in the house. We serve. I do not understand why people are not fighting each other on buying Craig's 231. 
It's a hell of a bargain. Well, I haven't, not that many people know about it. I've only talked about it a few times on the channel and, you know, it's not like it's been advertised anywhere or anything like that. So, and it's not a steal of a price. I mean, they're, they're, I don't know what they go for in Chrono 24, but I mean, it's, it's a competitive price and it is one of the most accurate ones out there, I think. B serves in the house. Even Mark Zuckerberg takes off the gray t-shirt and puts on a suit when he has to speak before Congress. Yep, there you go. I bought Craig's 005 and it was in near mint condition. There you go. It and that's a beauty. That's a beauty of a watch. I take care of my pieces. The 231 has some fine scratches on it. This one has a couple of little tiny very fine scratches. They do get worn, but I don't I don't abuse them. If somebody wants a safe queen, wants a box watch, then that they shouldn't buy from me cuz I don't have box watches. Uh, let's see, they're still living in the colonial period, lol. Kyle, I'm not sure, I guess, whichever is available. Okay. All right, oh, so what else? What else are we going to talk about? What else are we going to talk about? Let me see if there's any, um, speaking of the 231, let's get it live on the, sh on, the, on the channel here. Let's see if there are any other... Uh, any other things I need to address here in the email? I'll tell you one problem. One problem with with buying the ambulances right now is the the prices have gone up the last couple of years because there, there, it has become a thing. People call them campulances, campulance. It, it, you know, converting them into, quote, campers, uh, you, know, uh, you know, this van life movement, this whole van life movement thing, people living in vans. Uh, the, the, the ambulances, it's become a thing. And there's Facebook groups and stuff. And, and so that's affected the market you used to really be able to get them cheap uh, but not as much anymore i think there's still a good bargain for what you get especially if you get a really nice one uh, but it's not the bargain you could have gotten two or three years ago i'll put it that way let's see that 005 has really grown on me i like that watch it looks better than the explorer 2 Oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous watch. Lance sent an email. We'll take a look. Okay, let's take a look. Wow. Interesting, interesting. I think this is very interesting. Look at that price. I mean, that's the, 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 that's the really cool thing about the phobia. Everybody has a phobia for um, steel watches, right? And so you can get deals on some of these gold stunners. So far, I like it. I like it. It's got some battle scars. Now, I don't particularly like the way the lugs are kind of like stuck on like that. I don't really like that look, but some people don't mind it. Some people don't mind it. It looks good from the top view. Let's see what the size is. But, you know, $4,000. Are you kidding me? I wonder if it has a um, the correct clasp. They didn't show that in the pictures. Um, circa 1983 on a replacement leather band and generic buckle so it might not even be a gold buckle so you might have to buy yourself a gold buckle it's located in San Francisco it's a 35 mil which is about the smallest I would get you know for a man's dress watch it'd probably be even better for a lady but um, but that would work. That would absolutely work. For 4000 
I think it's neat. Now, would I rather have like a champagne color dial, like a lighter color dial, like a silver color dial or something? Yes, I would. Because there's not much contrast between those hands and the dial, you'll notice. But for $4,000, good find Lance. Good find Lance. Um, let's see. Just really nailed it with that model. Yes, I sold two Seikos to trade up to the 005, an excellent luxury beater watch. Yeah, you won't wear that one out. Uh, Kyle's in the house. Yeah, I think there is one that is black and yellow, right? Okay. Um, wear it in good health. The black and yellow is the special edition. Okay. Um, that's correct. Uh, I like the blue dial, though. Craig, I thought 28 millimeter was the ideal size for a lady's watch. Brie loves her. Um, her watch is... Um, uh, 35.5 mils, right? The 038. And she loves it. She loves the size. So I think it depends on the case shape and all that too. Uh, as to, you know, and and the strap and everything. But she loves hers. And her, her wrist is tiny. Kyle's in the house. I just... I'm just waiting for them to slightly shrink the snowflake. If it was the size of Rich's Soko, it would be... Per, yeah, but they need to also make it thinner, Kyle. They need to make it about 12 mils thick max. 12 mils thick max. Max. Maximum. ViewSurf says the black and yellow 9F GMT is especially accurate. They're all real accurate. <laughs> don't worry. You don't need to get the, uh, the one with the star on it, you know, five seconds guaranteed thing. They're all insanely accurate. Brandon's is still spot on. I mean, it hasn't budged either way. It's spot on since she got it. Um, remember, Grand Seiko under promises and over delivers. That's how they operate. Um, Carl's in the house. Someday you're going to miss the 005. <laughs> Not when you have an 002. <laughs> the 002 is pretty much the top the top of the top of the top of the top it's like all the way up there it's like did i say it's it's the top the 005 the 00 002 002 the 002 stunner yeah it's all the way up let's see um the spring drive movement adds a lot of thickness. Well, the, see, but that's what's neat about the 002 is this is a spring drive, and it's very trim. It's like 10 mils. Now, it is manual wine, but with three-day power reserve, that, that works for me. It's fine with me. Every, every day or two, I just wind it. Not a big deal. Blue says the 002, top of the line. They do make some more expensive Grand Seikos than this, but I don't think they make any that are any better. You can spend more money, but you're not going to get a better watch, in my opinion. Speaking about automobiles, American cars of the 80s had speedometers that only went to 85 miles per hour. Why is that? Were they speed limited or what? No, they weren't. You could pin that speedometer and just keep right on going. And they did that. It was silly. They had a 55-mile-an-hour national speed limit for a while there. And they figured, well, since the speed limit's 55, we don't need to have the speedometers go higher than 85 right so they just did that for a while i don't know what they thought they were going to achieve because no most of the cars were not speed limited you could pin and bury that speedometer i did it many times so yeah jeep is in the house craig are you still using the black hd strap span no this is the brown one this is dark brown that's on here right now Dark brown, and it is the HD straps. It's not the original. Um, da, 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 um, uh, let's see. The 02 and the 005 would have been a hell of a combo. Yeah, but the 002 and the 231 is also a heck of a combo. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 
Okay, Craig, uh, why did you dump your snowflake? It was kind of an in-betweener watch. It wasn't a great sport watch, and it wasn't a great dress watch. It was kind of like an in-between those two things. If you wanted one watch to serve both of those purposes, it's an okay choice for that. But I'd probably still go for the 005 if I wanted to do a one-watch solution. I'd probably go with the 005 because the snowflake is a little bit too thick. If the snowflake was, let's say, 12 mils thick and, let's say, 40 mils, not 41, it was a little bit big, uh, you know, to be a dress watch. It was a little bit big to be a dress watch. And so, yeah, I, it was kind of like one of the in-betweeners. See, this is 38 and a half mils. This is a perfect size for a dress watch, in my opinion, if you have a decent size watch. I have a 7.25 to 7.5 inch wrist, depending on the time of the year. 38 and a half, I wouldn't want it any bigger than this. So 41 mils, it was just, it was just a little bit too big. Beautiful watch, very comfortable on wrist, a little bit too big for my purposes. For Carlos, it would look great. Uh, there is 130k GS on the website now. There you go. Show the picture, Quag. 002038. Um, let's see here. Where is it? I've got to get better at this. Um, stills. Oh, where is it? Is it on the other page? Stills 2? Huh. Well, that's interesting. I had it. Oh, here's the 005. Here's the 005. Oh, it was staring me right in the face there, and I missed it. There's the 005, of course. There's the 002. There's the 002 in sunlight. And there's the faux pay with the 002 and the 038. So there you go. <clears throat> okay. By request. Um... Da, 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 da. Craig, do you like Tudor watches? <laughs> Is that a joke? No, of course not. We would not consider Tudors. Does a 231 get any wrist time? This? Oh, yeah. I, I wear it a lot. See, it's pinned. It's fully charged there. See the charge indicator? I wear it a lot. I wear it most of the time, actually. Not doing as many calls on clients right now because we're still semi-shut down here in, in the socialist state of Maryland. So, yeah. Uh, also, gas prices have been pumping thanks to Biden. Yeah, they're going to go way up. He's going to try to wreck the oil and gas industry completely. Kyle's in the house. Good question, Tudor. LOL. Um, have you seen their canceling doctors? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Carlos in the house. Um, let's see, Lance. It seems that they do not think appropriate for the, the snowflakes time uh, content of some of the books. Okay. Um, yeah, they're insane. Uh, Tom's in the house. See, a lot of these people have way too much time on their hands. That's what, the way I see it. Uh, let's see, because he used to draw racist cartoons, um, up early in motion. Um, so the government thought that people would not violate the speed limit if they could not see how fast they were going. <laughs> Thanks, Craig, for clarifying. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of stupid. Yeah, Carlos in the house. Tom is in the house. The other Tom is in the bed, most likely. My 005 has been one second per year. Yeah, I think that's accurate enough. <laughs> I think that's pretty close to the where you need to be. Uh, Connell in the house. That's amazing. Yeah, Lance is in the house. He, he says uh, that is crazy. The whole cancel culture thing. So silly and getting way out of hand. I would say so. Uh, I'm surprised they haven't canceled this channel yet. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, let's see. Um, all right. Well, hey, we're going to wrap this puppy up. We've been going for almost an hour. We started early. We got a lot done. We got a lot done today, folks. We made a lot of progress. Let's see if Bitcoin pumped at all. Let's go back to the 231 real quick while I figure this out. Um, and Bitcoin is at 47.8. 47.8. We've got a little slight green candle going on right now. 
So hopefully it'll just keep going sideways for a while here in March. Hopefully we won't have a big pullback in March. I'd be happy if we hold these kinds of numbers all month long, and then we'll go ahead and have a pump in April. What do you guys think about a pump in April? So blue, my GS winter has been about pl plus five seconds a month. That's good. Fast is good. Fast is good. That's easy to adjust. Uh, let's see. Um, and Kyle says that is really good, too, also. Wow. Okay. All right. Thanks, folks, for watching. For, for watching, for tuning in. We'll keep you posted. We will. We'll keep you posted as things develop. There are always things developing on this channel. There are things that are happening on this channel, so we'll keep you posted. We will keep you posted. Thanks for watching.